state of mind called death. Now it operates on two levels. Now what does that mean? Um, heresy. We need the heresy now, don't we? Here it comes. People can experience this state when they're not prepared for it. All of these people that go on these psychedelic trips and have these terrible experiences are people who have stepped into the world of the spirit without any preparation, without any discipline, without any forethought. And what they experience you can take and we can say, it's here, 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 here. So therefore, I'm going to read this, therefore, and you're going to highlight. Unfortunately, we won't have enough time to read the whole thing or talk about the whole thing, but I do want to pick up some major things so that we can explore this idea. The idea that Plato gives us a map of what the separation of the body and the soul is and what one will encounter. He's going to do it on several levels. Each level we could actually put a different map, different stage. Because for different people with different backgrounds, they experience different things. Therefore, it's a multi-leveled map. Some structural features run through the whole thing. And therefore, in giving a description of what this is like, what one encounters, there are certain features that go for all, for everyone. And I want to know whether or not, as you look at this description we just gave here of wisdom, whether or not certain terms reappear when he talks about the journey into the next world at the moment of death, whether it's the physical or the spiritual or the philosophical, at this point doesn't make any difference to us. First thing he says, which is very important, which is the same thing he said last in our last talk on the myth of Ur, is that for all souls who are going to experience death, there is a terrible danger right from the beginning of the experience of death. It's a terrible danger not to be prepared for death. He says, hey, wait a minute. You should study it. It should be your object of concern. If the soul is in fact immortal, then you better do it because you know what? You want to be in the best preparation for an inevitable journey. This terrible danger, what's interesting about this whole thing we mentioned last time, and I'd like to go back to it, there is no learning that takes place in the next world. There's no learning, no growth. What you're carrying are the implications of all that you've known, you've come to know, all your learning, what they call paideia, all, everything that brought about your growth, that's what you take with you. All that you've learned, that's what you take with you. Therefore, you take with you the full corpus, right? The full, uh, uh, what should we call it? The full gestalt of the, the totality of your nurture and your education in the highest sense. That's what you take with you. Therefore, if you take, with it, take it with you, then you're going to look at everything and experience everything through that learning. Because that's a terrible danger because therefore, hey, you're going to misunderstand some of it, and that's going to cost you. But it doesn't have a positive side. You're not going to learn something there, because there's only one place you can learn. And that's not there. So therefore, what does he say? He says, well, the first thing he says, look, here. two possibilities. If, if you know about it, if you're prepared for it, if you have a positive attitude towards it, then, then, You'll follow your guide, the very guide that's been with you your whole life, you'll recognize. So, ah, buddy, buddy, I didn't know that was you standing behind me and helping me. And then you, if you're prepared for it and you understand these things, that means you understand 
the circumstances of what you are going to experience. The other side, no philosophy, no thoughts, and if there's a very strong attachment to the physical universe, and the physical body on death, then there's a wandering around and a wandering around, pointless meandering. One or the other. This is now for those people who have studied and pursued the life of the spirit, or philosophy, same thing. They have encountered something quite interesting. They, in fact, when they follow the guide, pick up another guide. Gods for companions and gods for guides. So there's a whole range of possible guides. So now I'd like to talk about the earth. Now, the basic metaphysics, if you want, and all the Plato, which is clearly seized upon by all the Neoplatonists, is very simple. And all it involves is one idea, thank goodness. That's this one. Whenever there are two things, two domains, there is always an interconnection or place where there's a communion between the two. That is essential. Because of this, you can say A is like B, and B is like A, because that area is common to them both. Therefore, if there is a heaven, and there is an earth, there has to be some middle which is similar to both. This feature then becomes an important feature for Plato. He says that we are within a sphere, and the earth itself is a sphere. And the entire, the entire thing, you see, is in equipose. Everything is equally homogeneous throughout. It can't change. There's no shift of inclination, because the earth is right in the middle of it all. And its axis runs right through the whole. Therefore, it's perfectly fit between, and this whole thing is the heavens. And what we're going to do, as you see, is we're going to have the image of the heavens, the earth, and there's going to be a higher view of the earth, a lower view of the heavens, and that's going to be the common. We can put it metaphysically, we can say that um, there's real being, real being, and becoming. We can talk about the fact that there is the good or the one. And we can say we are here but there's a middle region which we can then participate in, which in fact is the realm of the intellect, being. It's that shared region. This is divine being. So the same thing. There we always have two with a third. The third is common. Now, let's see if we can then push this. All right. What then do we encounter? Time. Where was the time? Pardon? Time. Where was the time? T-I-M-E. Did you point out time? Between heaven and earth or something? 